Hello, and what is up, friends, lovers, and enemies from all walks of life. I would have liked to have filmed and put this video out a lot closer to the inauguration. However, I freelance on top of working and just stuff. I don't owe anyone anything, as my therapist would say, despite what I feel. So I have a lot of feelings on this topic and I'm, I'm going to try my best to like keep my opinion out so that you can get like all angles of the discussion because there is no right or wrong answer about this. Just wanted, just wanted to talk. Like in my Esther Ensing video, Ella Emhoff is like the jumping off point. She's not, she literally didn't do anything wrong. Unlike Amanda Ensing. Ella like, gen she didn't. She didn't do anything wrong. Other than not dating me, is that wrong? Is it a crime? Sir Joseph Gordon Biden, I would like to make it a crime. I would like to have be dating Ella Emhoff. Before I explain the actual meat, Ella is also not the only person who feels this way. So also like she deserves to not have her entire life in the public eye. She is the stepchild of an elected official. She did not choose to have people looking at her and or knowing her. Although if people are gonna know her for her recent IMG contract and future modeling career, that's a different story. I'm also going to be using she, her pronouns for Ella because that is what she has publicly been using up to this point. So what is happening with Miss Ella Emhoff? Basically, since Kamala Harris has been elected VP of the US, I need to stop doing that. People have been opening their eyes and seeing right next to Kamala, the beautiful, illustrious Ella Emhoff. I mean, truly people have been hearing about the whole Harris family. Um, Kamala Harris got married fairly late in life to, I didn't write down his name, but Mr. Emhoff, um, Ella's dad, and he had already had Ella and her sibling from a previous marriage. There have been a lot of TikToks talking about how attractive Ella is. They're not wrong. As well as there have been lots of articles written by various major Jewish publications such as The Forward, Please Hire Me, and Hey Alma. However, after the inauguration, Ella's spokesperson, who I'm assuming is like the spokesperson for the Harris family, released a statement saying that she's not Jewish, essentially, um, and these publications then released statements apologizing for assuming her identification with Judaism. Obviously, Ella is the only one who knows and doesn't know what it is that she identifies with, and I will respect that. However, personally, I'm respecting, but I'm also having an opinion. A little concerned since I just came off a work meeting that this is Lashon Hara, but I'm going to tell myself that it's not, that this is an intellectual exercise. Personally, I would have really liked for Ella to not have said anything because this feels like an outright rejection of Judaism, which might make her feel guilty if she ever decides to connect slash reconnect with her Jewish heritage later on. So it just seems like establishing unnecessary baggage and also she doesn't owe anyone an explanation. Although I guess, no, I'm not gonna concede. I will not accept that. Here's why I feel this way, the meat. The problem is that Judaism is traditionally a matrilineal ethno-religion, meaning, so according to Halakha, if your mother is Jewish, you're Jewish no matter what, but not if your father is and your mother isn't, but that's also kind of antiquated. So generally the only people who still view it as like entirely matrilineal are the Orthodox and assholes. Most people nowadays do not discriminate between patrilineal and matrilineal Judaism, or at least not conservative reform reconstructionist. So I'm gonna say like most, Americans. My personal hero and mentor also says, if you want to convert to Judaism, your soul is already Jewish, which I love and kind of view as like an extension of the same line of thought. And Ella's choice to identify herself as not Jewish, despite her father being Jewish, both heritage-wise and he practices, this is indicative of issues with this long-standing larger conversation of who is and who isn't Jewish and like what that all means. I think it's fairly obvious that anyone who chooses to be Jewish is Jewish, so not gonna get into that. 
that would be a waste of time. Since Judaism is commonly agreed on as like a peoplehood slash also an ethno-religion, we're gonna kind of follow that thread. So if you use the rigid viewpoint that Judaism is an ethno-religion, but you also, if you're not Jewish, this might not make any sense. So we're using the rigid viewpoint of Judaism as ethno-religion, but then also taking the liberal lens that views patrilineal and matrilineal Judaism as equally valid. So basically you could say that like everyone who's born to a Jewish parent or Jewish parents is Jewish. So then detour. What happens if someone who's ethnically Jewish and was raised observing Judaism then converts to Christianity? So I found this actually really great answer on Chabad dot com slash org is it question mark i don't know which one it is anyways i remember when i was a teenager i was like at high holiday services and the rabbi was like did you know you can convert to judaism but you can't convert out of judaism we have a word for that and the word is converted jew first of all my young mind was blown second of all i was thinking about this when i was talking to sophie about ella m hoff and i was like <gasps> brain blast. So then I was like, did I make this up? I googled it and I found this. I also, sorry, don't like to source from info from Chabad, but this one is actually pretty good. So basically this person asks if their sister who had converted to Christianity, if her kid was Christian or not. Like they baptized the kid, but it was a question about the Judaism. So Rabbi Zalman Nelson is the guy who runs the column, I guess. And so he replied and he says, logically, I would have to agree with you. If Judaism is a religion, then someone who doesn't believe in the religion should no longer be Jewish. The reality, however, is that it doesn't work that way. Throughout the Tanakh, we find Jews breaking every facet of their covenant with God, joining and forming all sorts of idolatrous cults and heathen practices. Yet when the prophets chide them, they're called my people Israel. So that's like the beginning of the answer. And then he concludes by saying, apparently Jewishness is about neither religion nor race. Unlike a race, you can get in, but unlike a religion, once you're in, you can't get out. As with some dude that he mentioned, so I cut his name out, I don't really care. Once you are part of this people, you are the entire people. As Israel is eternal, so your bond with them is irreversible unbreakable and eternal. I just thought that was a really great explanation of this thing that I couldn't express because I didn't, I haven't got, surprise, surprise, guess what? I haven't been a rabbinical school. Anyways, based off this precedent that's basically existed in Judaism forever, paired with the more inclusive view of Jewish lineage, it feels pretty cut and dry that you could conclude, yes, Ella Emhoff is Jewish slash is still Jewish, that there wouldn't really be any question about it. However, that's also not totally ethical to be like, no, you don't get to choose your identity. I mean, it feels weird to be like, you don't get to choose this thing. But also I couldn't suddenly be like, no, I'm not American. I was born in Maryland, so the conclusion can be drawn, but it, since it's different, like it feels, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, which is that it feels gross to be like, you can't not be Jewish, but also that you can understand the reasons for why this is kind of a thing that like you can't not be Jewish if that's your heritage. We're gonna get into it more because uh, as you should know by now on this channel, two Jews, three opinions, one Jesse, five mouths. One here, one there, and three in my other video, so. So now we get to get into the ooey gooey juicy bits. The My favorite part of being Jewish and discussing anything Jewish is getting to the shit that has no answers, which is also what Judaism is. Things don't have answers. You're supposed to answer a question with another question. Is Judaism improv? in practice. Maybe so. That's a secret I'll never tell. A lot of people like to bring up Nazis when they talk about Jewish identification. And people usually say like, it doesn't matter because Nazis would still say you're Jewish or still know you're Jewish, blah, blah, blah. It's a bad look to let Nazis decide who's Jewish and who's not Jewish. We're going to really not give any credence to that, but that is a thing that gets said fairly often by Jewish people. But you know, this way of thinking still does impact Jewish people and the way that we identify. So like, we're gonna follow it a little bit, but try and focus on the way that it impacts 
Jewish people. Because, like, feeling compelled to distance yourself from Judaism can be consciously or unconsciously motivated by a desire to fit into a standard that's been set by non-Jews slash anti-Semites etc. There's also a, just a buttload of discourse, um, but I feel like I've seen it a lot recently around whether or not assimilation is inherently anti-Semitic, and I'm gonna say yes, but I also like living as a secular Jew, so I don't really have any intentions to de-assimilate, or whatever the word would be. Yes, we are going to have to pretend that my lighting didn't just totally change and I possibly may have shifted. I'm sick of this back and forth nonsense with my lighting rig always dying. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna get a second one. The founder of modern Zionism, Theodore Herzl, genuinely believed that Jews could escape persecution by assimilating enough. And his eldest son, like, did actually convert to Christianity. But after witnessing the Dreyfus affair as a journalist, he was like, oh, no. I was totally wrong. And he wrote multiple books, The Jewish State and The Old New Land, that were basically like, as long as anti-Semitism exists, uh, assimilation's not going to be possible. So let's go live somewhere else where we won't get hate crimed or systematically murdered. And then once we're safe, we can figure out how to get other people to not hate us. I bring him up because I think it's important to note how one of the most important Jewish thinkers in modern history's identification with Judaism was entirely shaped by anti-Semitism. It's an extremely powerful coercive force, so I couldn't not mention it. My colleague slash mentor, who I previously mentioned, um, shared this really awesome post on her Instagram recently that included a quote from this Zionist leader who was denied exit from Soviet Russia to move to Israel. So anti-Semitism like was very impactful in his life is the premise. But this quote from Natan Sharansky says, when Jews abandon identity in the pursuit of universal freedom, they end up with neither. And Blake Flayton, who was the one who posted the post, made the post, posted the quote, captioned it, shedding your Jewish identity in order to be accepted into a progressive space is one, not very progressive, and two, is psychological anti-Semitism, and three, will never be enough. And I'm actually inclined to believe that a lot of what Blake wrote in the caption were like factors in Ella's choice of identification, whether or not that was conscious or, you know, subconscious. Mm, who might I say? But Ella goes to Parsons and Parsons is an art school in Greenwich Village. So basically like Oberlin College or Hampshire College, but with more cocaine and probably richer families, if that's even possible. So now let's get away from the anti-Semitism. Obviously, I talked to my friend Sophie, one of my very large and growing collection of Jewish friends named Sophie, about this because one, she knows I'm thirsty as hell for Ella Emhoff, and two, she has good opinions, and three, she grew up in an interfaith household. So where I feel like I can intellectually sort of understand someone deciding to stop identifying as Jewish, like there definitely is a real roadblock there for me because... I feel like I've mentioned I have two Jewish parents and a just a deep lineage of Jewishness. But Sophie, like, definitely has a better perspective um, as someone who the situation's, like, definitely a little bit more relevant to. Um, and her perspective was, like, I get it, but it does make me emotionally sad. But Sophie did give me this actually very eloquent message because I wanted to use her actual words. She says, as someone who has one Jewish parent and one Goy parent, I am conflicted. Being Jewish is a huge part of my identity. It is something I have always felt a connection to and claimed for myself since I was a little kid. As soon as I was old enough to take charge of my own Jewish education, I did. And my mom now often jokes that I'm the most Jewish member of our family. I've been able to connect with my Grammy on a Jewish level that no one else is able to. And I feel so lucky and so proud to be Jewish every single day. Ella Emhoff clearly does not feel the way I do. 
out. She has not claimed that part of herself. She does not want the joy of being part of the Jewish community. I think I feel bad for her because clearly she doesn't see the blessing she was born with. However, if she does not want to join our party, I don't want her at the party. She is always welcome to claim her Jewishness, but as long as she is not doing so, I will not view her as Jewish. Her identity is not mine to decide. Like, damn. So if we just did my whole video in one text message. Basically comes down to like three slides slash perspectives. Nazis say you can't, so you can't stop being Jewish. You can stop being Jewish, but a lot of Jews still feel like icky about that or like agreeing to almost like let that happen. Is I can't really explain it any way other than that, other than like deeming the legitimacy of de-identification or three, you can say you aren't an act as though you aren't Jewish anymore, but you can never stop actually being Jewish, which is like a callback to the converted Jew thing. But this is according to Jewish codes and tradition and the Jewish community. My favorite perspective is this third perspective. And here's why. Many of my friends come from interfaith homes, not just Sophie, or what is colloquially called half Jewish, even though we really need to stop using that term. I just think you, this way you know what I'm talking about. And a lot of them grew up not really practicing Judaism at all. However, when they came to college, they were like able to reconnect with that part of themselves and their heritage. Personally, my best example of this, um, not like my friends are examples, but in this scenario, I can use them as examples. My friend Kayla grew up not really Jewish, they found out kind of early on-ish through their love of um, musical theater that they had Jewish ancestry, but no one in their family actually practiced Judaism like at all. But myself and her other friends were like able to encourage her to reconnect with her Jewishness when she expressed that she was like wary of coming to a Passover Seder because she felt that she like wasn't Jewish enough and therefore would be invading the space, which not true. So while some people might find this tethered to the Jewish community, like limiting or restrictive, it can also be equally comforting and validating for many people whose families have been separated from Jewishness through assimilation or intermarriage or force. This can become sort of a point of radical inclusivity of people who are looking to reconnect with their Jewish heritage. And like personally, the reason, I mean, it should be kind of obvious why this is my favorite, but I really do think that these benefits outweigh the cost of it being a limiting sort of tether. And so like, it's more beneficial to keep that line of connection than it is to like more broadly encourage this like freedom of choice to reject your Jewish identity, for lack of better terms. Because Jews have been persecuted throughout so much of history, I think that it is so invaluable to have this link that lets people reopen the door to their ancestral Jewish heritage if they choose to do so. Unfortunately, I do think I put a little bit too much of my perspective into this video, so I am gonna apologize for that. But for looking good, I'll never apologize. And I also hope that I gave the other sort of like perspectives fair explanation, though I did feel like I didn't really need to explain why people want to have ownership over their own identification. I think like individual freedoms are so ingrained into Western society that it didn't really need an explanation. There really is no like right or wrong like answer or like way to live as per these questions that I have been like, hey, these are big questions and big conversations and there's no answer, but such is Judaism. And so obviously Ella Emhoff has the legitimate right to choose to identify however she chooses to. Her statements just made me feel a lot of things and then like incited a really good and like meaningful and deep conversation between me and Sophie. And so like, I kind of wanted to bring that here as well. That's really it. Can you believe it? A shorter video, except is it really gonna be short? I don't know, it's too soon to tell because my lights died every three seconds. So it took way longer to film than I would have liked. Hopefully this is going up before Sunday. Valentine's Day, as I might have mentioned, is my birthday. I will be turning 24. I do think it will be time for me to leave the universe permanently once I hit mid-20s. Mid-20s seems bad. So I will just simply not do that. Just kidding. I will continue to live. I will not be happy. But do wish me happy birthday.
I like the attention. Um, I love Valentine's Day. If you say anything rude about Valentine's Day, um, I, you will get blocked immediately. Blocked and reported. Blocked and reported. But that's it. Go ahead and follow all of my social media that's linked down below. You can go watch whatever else you want to watch. There's way too many videos on this channel. Will I go and do Mass Delete again? Maybe. Every day I grapple with the mortifying ordeal of being known and having produced actual evidence of that existence and want to delete it all. But then I can't stop myself from making things, so it's like, well, there's still gonna be stuff. New things that I make. Can't stop myself from myself. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Whoa, whoa, mama mia, here I go again, my eye, how could I resist ya, mama mia, does it show